Hey guys, Gore here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I've got a super quick guide for you on identifying the location of enemy gunfire. One of the most common struggles I hear from new players is that they feel like they never know where they're being shot from, so we're going to take a look at some audio and visual cues that you can use to quickly find cover or effectively return fire. If you enjoyed today's guide, drop it a like and subscribe for more future squad content. I've also got a special announcement. We now have our very own community squad server named the Inglorious Blueberries. We welcome new and experienced players alike, so jump in sometime. Now, let's get into things. There are a lot of things that feed into today's topic of recognizing where you're being shot from. Most new players, myself included, came from games where most fights occurred in close quarters, so we've never been tasked with identifying weapon noises from greater distances. The engagement range and squad is far larger than almost every FPS currently on the market. This combined with the non-linear firefights leads to new players being baffled by who's engaging them and where they're shooting from. Your best tool for locating shooters in squad is audio cues, but there's two parts to that audio, one you want to hone in on and the other you need to block out. When you're shot from a distance greater than about 50 odd meters, you'll hear two things, the snap of the round flying by you if your enemy misses and the report of their rifle firing. Too often, new players get sucked into focusing on the snap of the rounds and end up being unable to find the shooter before they're finished off. When it comes to listening to the report of the enemy weapon, there are two things you want to take note of. The first being, what is the general direction the enemy is firing from? Acquiring this first will allow you to take cover immediately that you know shields you from your attacker. The other part of the audio is the time between the snap and the report of the rifle. The longer the time between, the greater the distance the enemy is firing from. With all this information in mind, let's take a look at a couple of examples. The first we have is an enemy firing from a distance of about 100 meters. A great tool for quickly triangulating a shooter is to move your mouse back and forth. This will move your player's head in-game and thus shift the audio from ear to ear, thus allowing you to hone in on where the shots are coming from and will also help you dodge some of the incoming rounds. Next up, we have an enemy firing at us from about 250 meters. Notice the time between the rounds flying by and when you hear the report of the rifle. Like we said previously, the greater the time between the two, the further out the shooter is. Most of the time, your best bet is to get into cover first and then make a move towards eliminating the enemy from a location they do not expect you from. As a side note for using audio cues, the more shots you can draw, the more likely you'll be able to pinpoint the shooter. So instead of hitting the deck when engaged, keep moving and move in an unpredictable way. When you do locate your enemy, don't feel like you need to immediately engage them. Chances are they're still staring at your last known position if you did take cover, so take the time to move positions or relay the enemy location to a teammate and have them engage. The other way to identify a shooter's location is through visual cues. There are several different visual indicators that we'll take a look at. The first we have is bullet impacts. If the round doesn't hit you, it's going to hit something. If I'm running up a hill and I see rounds landing around me, I know I'm being shot from behind, and if there are no impacts, then I'm likely being shot from the front or sides. Buildings and walls can also be your best friend because when you're up against one, you're cutting off half of the potential locations you can be shot from, so the area you have to scan for the enemy shots is much smaller. The next we have is simply player outlines. At the start of every game when you're a new player, you should spend 30 seconds looking at the team selection screen and see what your enemy's uniforms look like. This way, when incoming fire is landing around you and you proceed to scan your surroundings, you'll be more likely to identify the enemy that doesn't fit into their background. Whether it be a green head popping up over a hill or a silhouette in a window, knowing your enemy and being able to distinguish them from their background will save you in a handful of situations. Lastly, for visual cues, we have your map. This is by far one of the most useful tools that new players neglect. 
Your map can show you where friendlies are, and a decent rule of thumb is if you have friendlies massed in an area, the enemy fire is most likely coming from elsewhere. If you have player icons turned off, you can also see where friendly players are looking. Oftentimes, this will give you a good enough idea of the enemy's location to either scan and return fire or take cover. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. Much of the things we talked about do come with time, so if you're getting frustrated in the early stages of your squad experience, stick with it. You'll keep improving and eventually identifying a shooter will become second nature. If you found today's guide helpful, leave it a like and subscribe for more future squad content. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'm out.